I'm going to talk about a subject that I think about often, but rarely talk about, cults. People have intuitive feelings about how the word cult should be used. You know a cult when you see it from the outside looking in, but rarely do people identify themselves as being in a cult. Of course, the term cult has negative connotations and some prefer to use the term new religious movement. Most often, cult is used in reference to a new religious movement, but cult is a term that does not necessarily apply to a religion. It can be applied, if it fits, to any type of social movement. There are various definitions of a cult and checklists that can be used to determine whether or not a movement is a cult. Here are some common basics. A cult is a group or movement held together by a shared commitment to a charismatic leader or ideology. It has a belief system with the answers to all of life's questions and offers a special solution to be gained only by following the rules. It requires a high level of commitment from at least some of the members. It typically considers itself to be separate from and better than the rest of society. The way I see it, lots of groups meet that general definition of a cult. Now, I'm old enough to remember 1993, a long time ago, when 76 members of the Branch Davidian cult in Waco, Texas died as the FBI finished a 51-day siege against them with tanks and tear gas ending in a devastating fire. I have personal reasons to remember. I was in a cult myself at that time. I mean, I was a kid, teenager, going to church with my mom. I didn't feel like it was a cult, but that church had been described that way in the news media. And being a member of a designated cult at that time made it seem especially relevant to me and to us. I remember it clearly. We had to talk about it in the school chapel. I think they were just trying to help us to not worry about something like that. But I was like, is the government gonna come after us next? What if they call us a pedophile cult because of that guy who molested a teenager? Should we get guns to defend ourselves? Will they come kill us if we get guns? What the heck is going on? So, just briefly, the backstory. A couple years before the Waco massacre, a family had left the church and the mother decided to have her kids deprogrammed so that they would not hold those beliefs anymore. They were my friends. They used to give me rides to church and to school, and one of them was 18 years old, and he was taken away and held by force while being deprogrammed for five days, if I remember right. So since he was an adult, that was a legal problem and a newsworthy story, and ongoing court cases continued for years. In hindsight, I think that church was kind of cultish, and some of the members were too, but it varied, you know, everybody kind of has a different experience. I actually enjoyed it for the most part. The camaraderie, the sense of community, you know, shared values, th these kinds of things. Um, it was really helpful to me, I think, for a while. <laughs> uh, but even as a kid, I was skeptical and eventually just chose to quit because it didn't make sense to me. I mean, cult or not, nobody was forcing me to stay there especially as an adult. Anyway, maybe I'll talk some more about that someday. I just mention it to give context about why I'm interested in cults and group dynamics, truth, beliefs, coercion, consent, <laughs> and so on, you know, subjects like this. Anyway, I wanna talk a bit more about the Waco massacre and some of the issues that I've noticed during the time since, 27 years. <laughs> a lot more information has been revealed, although it takes some digging. And I think the common narrative that was put out in the media still tends to dominate, even though some of those details have been disproven or debunked, or at least There's reason to doubt. 
I've heard it said that mistakes were made <laughs> from government representatives, but that's putting it lightly. It was a fucking mess. And it's really hard to find that anyone was held accountable for that massacre. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but just one example of some an inconsistency. For years, the FBI denied using flammable devices at Waco and blamed the fire on the cult members. However, several years later, in 1999, an FBI spokesman admitted, and I quote, the FBI may have used a very limited number of military-type CS gas canisters on the morning of April 19, 1993, in an attempt to penetrate the roof of an underground bunker 30 to 40 yards away from the main Branch Davidian compound. The military canisters may have contained a substance that is designed to disperse the gas using a pyrotechnic mis mixture." End quote. Of course, they still blamed the fire on the cult members. I'm not sure who started the fire. I suppose it may have been cult members, as some indications point to them. But suffice it to say that the government was not straightforward in their communications about the fiasco. The way the Branch Davidians were treated by the special agents in charge and the hostage rescue team led directly to the fire. The hostage rescue team was sabotaging the negotiations, and this was facilitated by the special agents in charge and FBI officials in D.C. If some Branch Davidians set the fire, it was after they were gassed. That was a critical moment. There are other issues and inconsistencies, but I won't get into all of those. If you want to learn more about specifics of the Waco incident, a friend of mine did a podcast about it. I think there's also a video of that on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. Now, coming back around to the point I started with, the term cult, although sometimes valid, has often been used to dehumanize members of any marginal religion or odd group of people. Noam Chomsky wrote a book called Manufacturing Consent, which was about how mass media communication are effective and powerful ideological institutions that carry out a system-supportive propaganda function by reliance on market forces, internalized assumptions, and self-censorship, and without overt coercion. I'm not the biggest Chomsky fan, but that book is great. It's an older book that unfortunately seems to become more relevant with time. If you haven't read it, I recommend at least reading a summary. And in a similar but more specific essay titled Manufacturing Consent About Koresh, sociologist James Richardson pointed out that the media have the power to depict those who die violently as either worthy victims or unworthy victims. And those deemed worthy victims are humanized in news stories. Their lives and the grief of their loved ones will be thoroughly explored. However, those deemed unworthy victims will receive the opposite treatment. Little effort is made to humanize them, and the circumstances of their deaths tend to fully define them. Richardson argued that the news media's focus on Koresh as a purported all-powerful cult leader had the effect of dehumanizing the Branch Davidians. Little effort was made in the national media to depict the rest of the Branch Davidians and their children as individual persons with rights. They were simply a dangerous cult. I mean, I think David Koresh was a cult leader and his beliefs were crazy, he was doing weird stuff, but I'm not convinced that he was as bad as the media and government accused him of being. I'm not saying that he was a good guy, I'm not even trying to defend him. I can't imagine following him myself, but I can try to empathize with reasons why people followed him, why they chose to follow him. In general, they wanted to belong to a community with shared values and purpose. It's important to consider the humanity of so-called cult members and reasons why they may join and choose to stay in a cult. I think it's also critical to understand that attacking a cult may serve to reinforce the member's beliefs. 
rather than cornering and attacking them, trying to understand them may lead to more helpful approaches. Cult behavior manifests itself in our unwillingness to question the judgment of our leaders, our tendency to devalue outsiders, and to avoid dissent. We can overcome cult behavior by recognizing dependency levels which are inappropriate for mature people, by increasing anti-authoritarian education, and by encouraging personal autonomy and the free exchange of ideas. For me, I'll continue to use the term cult when I think it fits, but I also remain skeptical when the media or the government labels a group as a cult. Question the narrative. Hell, the media and the government kind of seem like cults too. That's something to think about. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's too much. Enough for now. Think for yourself. Good night.